fourth straight ass whooping that took place in Arlington. Good morning, Metroplex. Chantre, J Choppy, Cowboys insider Bobby Belt. It is time for Star Down, Star Down, brought to you by Crown Royal, the official whiskey of the NFL, even though you have me intrigued. Yeah. You do have oh, me intrigued. Right. I'm trying to decide whether to take the bait and fall for it first in going to you for some star Listen, ups. Uh, you know, you guys are coming here all negative on a, on a 47 to nine Monday, <laughs> and uh, I'm just here. To, I'm just here to, to 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 lighten the mood a little bit. That's what I do best. Star up, star up to the Cowboys front office. Okay, so this is a great good. day for them. You think that when you lose 47 nights, bad? No, it's a great day. Because they got to see firsthand what a unique and updated offense looks like. Yeah. Okay, this was like... People were superimposing the Dallas hat on Ben Johnson's head yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> this was like, you know how like in work you have like a continuing education course? You know, you gotta like, you gotta go learn the new things about yeah. the industry. The Cowboys don't do that. <laughs> this was that. And the best part, 100,000 people paid them to go. <laughs> so, I mean, you've got to put this in the wind call. That's solid. They got to see continuing education. They got to see modern offenses. I like this. All right. Uh, like so that's that. number one. Yeah. All right. A, a lot of people are saying, well, here's the question. Did Jerry Jones go anywhere? And normally I'm with you. Let people have their personal lives. This would be horrific optics if we get Jerry Jones at Albernay's and like a private room or we find out he goes and parties it up there with Tom Brady and... Um, who's the halftime show? Laney Wilson. And he's sitting there <laughs> drinking Johnny Walker blues and red wine after this destruction. That, in this instance, in my opinion, would be bad yeah. optics. Did Jerry just go and eat some duck and peas at his house with his golden chandeliers? Or did he go out and about for the Pittsburgh? The sore peas, right? The sore peas. peas. Or did he go out and about for a Pittsburgh rare steak? He looked, uh, he looked genuinely angry last night. Good. Um, it, it, it was a, now, a lot of people followed up kind of what you said from star up, uh, star up, um, yeah. not star down, star down. Uh, they're like Jerry Jones has his four commercial running and people pack the house to see this. And they will be the number one story on first take. Check, check, check. That is what he cares about. What Mike Basic has been saying for years. Yeah, this was that's not this instance, because last night it was equal parts like disappointment. Um he, like the shock he said afterwards, this is not shocking. I think he's shocked about the offense. I think he I think he doesn't think there's any legitimate reason why they should have put up nine points. And I agree. There's not. Uh, like, That's I mean, what Broadus really harped on to start off the postgame show when I was driving in. He he like put the defense to the side and he talked about the play caller and he talked about Dak C D and he talked about the offense. Jerry gave a, a, a somewhat of a pass in the post game to the defense. It wasn't a full pass. Like it was obviously we can't be like that, but it is the reality is you're missing four of your top five defensive players in this game. And then there were like two to three other depth pieces that weren't playing. And you had all the guys that you lost depth wise in the off season. And you're out, you're out. Even when those guys are there, you're not a very good defense. Yeah, like, we so saw that's already, the, yeah. did the saints game happen? Yeah. Everybody did the was, Ravens game happen? I think yeah. So. so, so those things are, are already there. So Jerry, I think kind of was like, a bunch of people are hurt over there, and we've struggled over there to begin with, and Detroit's going to stresses, so I kind of dismissed that. But he really, Jerry focused in on offense can't be like that. Like, we can't just score nine points. And so I think that's what was shocking to him and was was kind of left him a little stunned was how did that happen? And then the other part of it was there was anger. So it was disappointment, anger, and surprise, I think, across the board. No Bland, no Kendricks. I think Damone Clark had the green dot. And Tyler Smith starting at left tackle instead of Tyler Guyton. Back to you. Okay, great. Uh, uh, start with the Cowboy fans for selling your tickets to the Lion fans. This was great, okay? Uh, our good friend Jason Newman was there. said 60% Lion fans. Bob, over 50? No. I, I, th I thought it was a no. little high. There were too many boos for there to be 60% yeah. Lion fans. New Orleans, honestly, New Orleans. I know I saw the Lion fans who did the gritty over that poor girl <laughs> puking. This girl puking over the alcohol and the Cowboys performance. And you got an older Lions fan and then a younger Lions fan going by her with the gritty. Maybe he meant 60% of the noise. New Orleans, uh. <laughs> New Orleans and Baltimore felt like bigger road crowds to me okay. than, than, than yesterday. But also, I mean, maybe difficult to tell because they both were blue. What percent mm -hmm. would you say? Detroit, twenty five, twenty five. Okay. But still, I love it. All right, it's it, it shows that they're sick of this, right? When you start selling your tickets, yeah, you, you, it shows that you're sick of this. Uh, so that's good. And you know what? 
I actually do have a real, legitimate, non uh, sarcastic star up. <laughs> Can't be Brandon Aubrey. That's cheating. No. Star up to go for it on fourth and two from your own territory with two minutes to go in the first half. Oh, I had no. desperation marked next oh, to that. Oh, that is desperation. There's no doubt about that. They knew they they knew if they gave the ball back to Detroit, they were going to score again, which in a related story, they did. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> and that, a star up for Detroit running on third and 13. That run oh God. on the left side, I was like, oh, thank you. Yes. Th- okay. <laughs> thank you so much. Appreciate that. Uh, but, yeah, it was. These are good, Chop. I that, like them. All right. Thank you so much. But, yeah, from your own 37, you knew you were going to lose that game. It was at that point, we have no chance. We know we need to. We, we have to pick up this first Which half. begs the question, were you flipping out when they kicked the field goal at the end of the half? What was that situation there? Um, so they just gone for I think it would have been fourth and 12. There was a fourth and 12 in the game, and I think they just decided for a field goal attempt. When the, you mean after the Turpin run back right before the, the half where they did? I know, I know they star up to that. Up. Star up to the 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 Cavante Turpin fake on, on the, Man. that was awesome looking. That was Which cool for one? about two seconds. The first That's one. That's all we did. We ran four the same fake with Turpin while Ben Johnson is running four different trick plays. Yeah, we yeah. needed the gadget plays just to pick up any yardage. They just <laughs> did them to flex on us. Fourth and nine. That, the, Panay Sewell, I've never seen an offensive lineman dive like that for like, dear God, please get to the, the goal line here. I got a score on, on this Sharp play. Sharp said that. He goes, we're running hook and laterals the lineman now. I've never yeah. seen that. Fourth and nine with eight seconds to go. I I think they were the only thing I could think of is you're just trying to make it a three score game from a four. Okay. All right. So there it is. RJ Choppy with the Star Ups brought to you by Crown Royal, the official whiskey of the NFL. We already put it in historic context for the Cowboys, what this run has been like at home for them. So, but I had to go back and look. Uh, Green Bay, when they put up 48 against you on the road, that's the most points they've ever put up in a road game in the Super Bowl era. Yesterday was the most points the Lions have put up in a road game in the Super Bowl era, and it was the most points that the Saints have put up on a, in a road game in the last decade. So that goes to show you it's not just uh, historic for you. It's also historic for all these other teams. They're having like all-time great road performances against you. Let's get to your star downs. Okay, uh, Dak Prescott, you're a star down. Uh, he was awful in this game. Um I I thought, and I'm 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 proud of you for admitting he was all phone bad. I I thought you gave him a little bit of a pass for that interception. Which no, I see that's what somebody <laughs> else, that's what that's what somebody else tried to claim too. No, what I had said was I the said first one. It's a great play by Branch. It objectively was a great play by him. Are you talking about the one in the end zone. The first yeah. one, yeah, yeah, it was a really good play. It's a great by play him. by Branch. But I also said I think Dak saw him, and Dak said post game he okay. saw him. All right, and I just said I don't think he reasonably thought he could get there. So it's a bad read. Like that is a bad read. That's a bad play from Dak and a great play from Branch. Also, They're- if you look at the footwork, and Brady brought this up, but he just said like he didn't put anything on the, but he just kind of fluttered it out there. And, and Tom he- didn't think he saw him. Yeah, but if you look at his front so foot, Tom was wrong. You know the plant leg, he kind of opens up. He you know, and, and Dak has that kind of open gate when he walks anyway. But he opens that leg up, and that's just just from a baseball perspective. They just you Dak, don't get anything on the ball. Dak said, Dak Postkin, when he talked about it, said what he probably could have done was he said, I should have held my eyes to the flat for like a half second longer. He His, said, if I do that, then he doesn't have time to get back there. He's like, that. It, that's probably the adjustment I make. But seven turnovers in six games. He didn't hit seven turnovers till his 13th game last year. And the year he led the league in interceptions playing 12 games where everybody was like, oh, my gosh, he's a turnover machine. He had six turnovers in his first six games. So he's at a higher turnover rate right now than he was the year he led the league in interceptions. And that was their fourth red zone turnover. That is the most in the NFL. His third red zone turnover in his last two games with two picks and a fumble. And it just makes their red zone woes even worse. They came in ranked 22nd. 22nd in the NFL in terms of red zone. Dak finished with the second worst passer rating of his career, a 42.2. A 42.2. More miscommunication with CD Lamb. Don't dare ask him about it. Mm-mm. Don't dare ask either one about it. I don't know how in the heck. It's, it's like when, when, when me and Amanda watch reality shows and they're like, Oh, I didn't realize that like your religion was so strict. Oh, you don't like you don't eat meat? Like you don't have these conversations for a year or two while you're dating this person. Like, how are you still having these arguments and miscommunications? How are Dak and C D still going through some of this stuff? It seems to be a weekly occurrence. I but- mean, is it the is it the training camp time? I don't know. I, like, honestly, because I mean, they, they were so in sync last year. So I mean that's legitimately the only thing I can think is the training camp time mattered more than I initially thought. 
Uh, Trayvon Diggs. Oh, shut down PFF if they give him anything above a zero point zero grade. That'll do, that's going to be my <laughs> it will test. Will be above. Then shut that. down the shut down the website <laughs> because that that was whoa awful play coupled with awful effort. Like he looked like he wanted to be anywhere else other than the football field yesterday. Wow, just zero interest being out there. Um, he, he was uh, to me, those were the two blinking lights in this game from a player perspective, the number of ta- the number of Tolos that pointed out his tackling the Olays, And then, um, he got cooked by Williams for 37. There's a couple other times. He just doesn't look fast enough. Couldn't get the jam. Like he just missed the jam and let him run right by him on the, on the touchdown. I think, I think his tape is the epitome of this football game. He was the worst one. I think he's the biggest star down of anybody. From an individual player perspective, he was you really, for that. He was really he he was. You're right. He's representative of what the game was because it was awful play and it was just so low energy and such low effort. And to that point, Mike Zimmer star down. I know you're missing all your you're missing your best players or whatever else, but like th- this is a complete failure of leadership. If nobody on that defense seems to be f- like fearful of repercussions or anything else. That well, they're willing they're to go out there because did, Trey's did, effort. Like, I mean, Diggs or anybody like, did that look like a team that's really worried about busting their assignments or anything? It <laughs> looks very Mike Nolan ish. And they were, they did, weren't afraid of Mike Nolan or, or have a healthy respect for Mike Nolan and the tackling Donovan Wilson. I wrote down Malik hooker. I wrote down. These were just individual plays. Everyone was bad tackling. Montgomery had a run midway through the third quarter that was the play to me that epitomized. Oh, everything. so embarrassing! Like he had two of them. The first, the first touchdown run where he broke like seven tackles. Oh. I thought he, I thought he snapped his ankle on that play. No, that was Hutchinson. That was Hutchinson. Uh, and then that one you mentioned, like the first drive, you you come out of halftime, and not the first offense or the first defensive drive. You come out of halftime, you're getting destroyed. You think you would have a little fight? No, but Detroit just marches down the field. Yes, like uh, like a comp- not a not a not a a blip of any kind of resistance from the defense. It was just embarrassing.